Hey, what's up? My name is Bobby Ridge. I'm a life extensionist. Um, if you don't know what that is, I highly recommend you figure out what that is. Um, essentially, uh, science and technology is developing in a way to where it is, in the near future, we will defeat all death and suffering. You know, uh, old death for the most part. Um, you know, suffering uh, is a little tougher of an issue, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. But we're, we're definitely going to defeat all death, okay? And so we're going to be living for hundreds and thousands of years. You just got to live for another 20 years. And it'll be beautiful, right? So if you didn't if you didn't know about that research, I highly recommend you uh, check out all the evidence that supports the claim I just made. So I was talking to somebody on Facebook the other day, and they brought they asked me the question, you know, uh, you know, look, dude, you look like you're, you know, in your 30s, um, or he said you look like you're 30. Um, you know, why should you care about life extension? That's what he said to me, and so. Uh, I was on I was on a live stream when he asked me that, and so I was like, "Hey, dude, you know, I'm gonna write a script for a life a daily life extension vlog, and um, you know while you're on live stream, and you know we can work on it together." And so this is what we made. Um, so if I'm young, why should I care about life extension, right? And uh, you know, it's a little bit of a silly of a, a little bit silly little bit of a silly question but okay you know life extension it's a it's a new phenomenon um you know people haven't completely grasped it yet i get it okay so so here's a list of reasons why you should care about life extension if <laughs> even if you're still young <laughs> okay so the first and most obvious is because young people tend to have parents and they tend to have grandparents <laughs> Okay, <laughs> right? Their friends have parents and grandparents, and they want their friends and grandparents to not die. They don't want them to die of age-related diseases. They don't want them to die of really anything, right? They want them to live longer. They want to exist with them, right? Because not existing is lame as F, right? It's horrible. It's tragic. Okay, so if that wasn't the most obvious thing... Um, Another so maybe it's just the misunderstanding of life extension. So life extension, like when you extend an organism's lifespan by like over twenty percent, it's like, look, dude, you're likely extending health span. Okay. And there are ways of measuring health span and measuring, you know, um age reversal, measuring, you know, there's different there's biomarkers emerging and stuff, and there's you know, things here and there that you can measure, right? Uh and, you know, which I could, you could do a whole, you know, class on, right? Well, so when you hear life extension, just, you should probably just think health extension also, okay? Because obviously the person isn't going to keep decaying. It's not easy keeping an unhealthy person alive for a long time, right? Keeping an unhealthy person, like um, an unhealthy person alive for like, who's already like 110 and keeping them alive for another 30 years. Dude, do you think it's easy to keep that person sick for that long? Like, no, dude, the body's not that good. Okay. It's going to fail somewhere. It's too complex. And it's going to, once it fails enough, which doesn't require that much to fail, then it's going to go to just death short, shortly after. So you're going to have to, it's like, it's probably like, it, it's, it's it's just really difficult to increase six you know six span or whatever or you want to call it what do you call it I don't know um, to to increase morbidity right it's very difficult to do that right uh, we've done it on a societal scale right Ezekiel Doctor Ezekiel Emmanuel loves to talk about that and it's his reason for why he's going to stop taking medical treatments past the age of seventy five which is the most absurd thing that uh, anyone could say right. It's, it's up there with one of the most absurd things. It's embarrassing to say. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, hopefully he changes his mind soon. Um, I would be so embarrassed to say that personally. Um, and he will be soon, right? And so hopefully we can talk to him about that, change his mind. That'd be really great. Well, okay. So we have decreased morbidity on a societal scale recently, right? But dude, that required like hundreds of years of science, like like so much effort. And, um, but that's going to change soon. And we're going to be, uh, once we, uh, we're going to be increasing health span with life extension. And it's nearly impossible to increase life extension in any robust manner with, without increasing health, like, uh, like, okay. 
There's so many caveats, man. <laughs> There's so many caveats, especially since this is a new industry. Fuck. Okay, whatever. So here's another reason why you should care about extending for a life, why you should care about life extension research if you're young. Um, so I talked about health extension. Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, dude, so you age at a young age. Okay. Well, so life extension treatments can, um, and a lot of life extension therapies can target multiple different diseases. Uh, age related diseases happen to young people. Non age related diseases can be tackled by these different life extension therapies and, um, well, I mean, it, it's very, it's very obvious that they will be used to tackle many different diseases. And, uh, you know, people who are young die too. So these treatments can be applied to people who are young. So maybe we should think, maybe we should call them something else other than life extension so that people can fully, um, comprehend how powerful these things really are. Um, you know, they're going to be saving a lot of younger people's lives too, dude. You know, younger people deserve to have their lives extended also, <laughs> you know, they, instead of them living to not 15 years old, how about they live to, you know, 80 years old, right? That's a, that's a form of life extension, right? And for that people don't understand. Okay. Uh, so that's one of the most important reasons, right? 30 year olds die also, five year olds die all the time and life extension can significantly reduce that. Um, another reason is because of money, dude, dude, people are going to make so much money off of like real life extension research. Okay. Like actual life extension stuff. They're going to make some serious cash. Okay. And so to all the people who are going to make a lot of money, I'm potentially going to make a lot of money off of this industry very soon. Okay. I potentially discovered something where I'm going to make, you know, a buttload of capital capital, right. Uh, and off of life extension research. And so to all the people who are in my position and people who are going to make a lot of money, like Aubrey Gray and stuff, um, you know, it's very important that we use this money. We reinvest it back in the life extension. Now, dude, you don't need to tell that to Aubrey Gray. You don't need to tell that to me. You don't need to tell that to Martin Rothblatt. You know, uh, you don't need to tell that to Ray Kurzweil, dude. Like, you ain't going to see us using our money in like really silly ways, Right. We're not going to be buying flashy cars, dude. We're not going to be wearing, like, sparkly, like, like, like super expensive, like, chains like rappers do all the time. Like, dude, that's just absurd. You're going to see us reinvesting the money very appropriately. Not, uh, you know, we're not going to be paying for, like, lame yachts, you know, that are, like, freaking hundreds of millions of dollars, right? We're going to be – because what, what does that mean? If we waste our money like that, then we're decreasing our own chances at life extension. Right, we can be using that money for life extension. Research costs a lot of money. To FDA approve stuff costs a lot of money. Just to publish something costs freaking huge amounts of money, right? And so, and so we need to be making money. And so a lot of people are like, are, are like, don't like that. Don't like people saying, "Oh, make money," right? They, they don't like that. They're like, "Oh, that's so uh, self uh, selfless," right? Or uh, selfish. <laughs> um, and, you know, that's not the case, dude, with life extensionists. So don't, if you're a life extensionist, if you're a true life extensionist, don't be afraid to want to make money. We need money, dude. This industry is going to require billions of dollars, billions upon billions of dollars to really cure aging and to defeat all the different methods of death out there to death proof this place is going to cost a huge amount of money. And so start thinking dollar, dollar bills and be more morally superior about it. Okay. And, you know, be as transparent as you can about it, right? Like, I'll be live streaming my life as much as possible. I'll, I want to get to a point where I'm live streaming 24-7, really. And so, you know, you want to be as transparent as possible. Uh, another reason why you should study life extension research when you're young is because, okay, well, first off, you know, we want we want kids to be supporting this. We want them to be learning it so that when they grow up, they can be experts, even more experts than the people who are older, right? So, I mean, it's just such a silly question to ask because the question is usually asked in a uh, in a way in which it's like you you assume the answer, right? It's rhetorical, you know, and, and it's asked in like a in a demeaning kind of way. It's asked in like a condescending sort of way, you know, like oh, like you're so, you're so young, like why do you care about life extension research? And so, and so hopefully. Um, you know, I don't know. I feel like my responses kind of show how absurd it is to ask that question 
in a condescending way. Like if you're asking the question in a way that's like you actually want to know the answer and you, you, you don't come, you know, understand and you're genuinely seeking an answer, you know, that, that's cool. But if you ask in some like condescending way and whatever, which I don't think the guy was at the time, but you know, I have had people ask me that question in, in a, you know, in a negative connotating way, <laughs> you know, insinuating that, you know, uh, that, you know, you're dumb for doing this thing, right? And hopefully my responses of, you know, because you have parents and grandparents that need to live longer because diseases can be tackled with these life extension therapies, you know, at any age, really, you know, and younger people get age-related diseases all the time. And, um, and, you know, the, and, you know, we want younger people to be supporting this and we want them to be learning this so that they become experts. And, you know, we have a fresh mindset learning this, like, hopefully all of these points I made, made it really obvious that people shouldn't be asking that question in a condescending way, right? It's more embarrassing to ask the question in a condescending way than it is to ask it in a genuine way, I guess. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I guess another reason I'll say real quick, the life extension blogs. Oh, it's been 11 minutes. Dang, dude. Um, you know, life extension, the industry, the philosophy, the research, it's going to be the most incredible movement ever dude like it's gonna make this epoch the greatest epoch since like life began since the since the universe began you know since consciousness began like all these different epochs that are like the most important right it's gonna be another one of those right we're gonna experience it it's gonna be incredible it's gonna be intense and you know um you know if you're young you should study life extension research